have you ever been on the website of your favorite not evil search engine trying to get bike directions to somewhere you haven't gone and you wish there was a setting so it wouldn't keep forcing you down an arterial road have you ever been doing some bike advocacy and you need a little bit of better language to try and convince the traffic engineer or the the traffic planner uh, that people aren't going to bike there it's just too busy it's too stressful they shouldn't be there so on this episode of bike bike nudge nudge i'm going to talk about level of traffic stress i think this is an important topic and a little bit of theory that i'm going to use quite often in my subsequent videos uh, to show why i make choices of places to go and why we need to build our cities so that there's lower stress places for people to ride so that more people can ride bikes without there being barriers of where to go. So let's talk about level of traffic stress, what it is, what it looks like, and how it can affect whether or not people ride bikes. Level of traffic stress, or LTS, is a classification system for how comfortable someone should feel riding their bike on the given infrastructure. This paper by Makira et al. contains a handy table that describes each of the four levels of LTS. LTS-1 is the classification of the least stressful cycling conditions, and LTS-4 is the most stressful. If a city is serious about encouraging people to ride bikes as an everyday means of mobility, the city should only be building infrastructure that can be classified as LTS-1 or LTS-2. As you can see in this image from the Federal Highway Authority, only about 10-15% to 15 of people are willing to ride a bike on LTS-3 infrastructure, which, in my opinion, is actually bad infrastructure. If we want to have rates of people riding bikes like they have in Denmark or the Netherlands, we need to build LTS-1 and LTS-2 infrastructure, like they have in Denmark and the Netherlands. As you can see in the graphic, over half the population in North America could be interested in riding a bike if there was safe, low-stress infrastructure that took them where they needed to go. To show what the different LTS levels look like, I'm copying the methods used by Cabral and Kim in this paper. Ms. Cabral rode around the city and collected video of various types of cycling infrastructure. She used that video to create a survey and determine how the infrastructure affected people's decision to ride a bike. Let's start by looking at LTS-1 infrastructure. LTS-1 is the lowest level of traffic stress. It is considered suitable for all cyclists, even children. If you're familiar with Gil Penalosa and his 880 cities, LTS-1 infrastructure is probably what Mr. Penalosa would prefer as such infrastructure would be usable by anyone from 8 to 80 years old. I would be comfortable with letting my children, when they were 8, use nearly all of the LTS-1 examples I am showing with little or no supervision. My mom, who you may remember from my previous video about going for donuts and is in the neighborhood of 80, was less nervous in the, the cargo bike when we were on LTS-1 infrastructure. Please leave a comment if you would like a follow-up to this video where I get my mom's reaction to riding on various LTS infrastructure. LTS-2 infrastructure is more stressful than LTS-1 and is no longer suitable for children. My children are now teenagers, so I'm comfortable with them using LTS2 infrastructure. In my opinion, the same infrastructure can change classification depending on what else is around it. The cycle track I'm showing now is an extension of the cycle track I showed as LTS1 infrastructure. However, this section is on busier downtown streets, so feels more stressful than when it was on a residential neighborhood. LTS3 infrastructure is barely better than nothing, or, in the case of Sharrows on a busy street, worse than nothing. The city is either not interested in encouraging more people to ride bikes or failing those people if the city is building LTS-3 infrastructure. This painted bike lane should be LTS-2, but is actually LTS-3 because half the lane is in the door zone of parked cars. Even the city's own literature tells people on bikes not to use half the lane. Only confident, experienced people who already bike will use LTS-3 infrastructure and almost no one will be convinced to switch from driving to biking if the cycling infrastructure provided by their city is this stressful to use. Also, it is easy for this infrastructure to go from bad to worse, as you can see in this clip, as the painted bike gutter transitions to being sandwiched between vehicle lanes as a slip lane appears to the right. This is nearly the only LTS-4 infrastructure I rode on for this video. I am a confident, experienced cyclist and have often ridden on LTS-4 infrastructure. However, I mostly did it on a bike that are faster than my Brompton so that I can reduce the speed differential between me and the vehicles. I am now going to show two examples of why having an extensive network of LTS 1 or 2 infrastructure is important to encourage more people to ride bikes in your city. In the paper by McCurry et al., they found that people would detour to lower levels of traffic stress as long as the detour did not increase the overall trip length by 25%. 
This map shows the suggested routes for the four levels of traffic stress for an upcoming video where I take my cargo bike to Costco. Driving is 8.6 kilometers. If I'm willing to ride on major arterial roads, the trip is actually slightly shorter at 8.5 kilometers. This is because the driving route goes a little east to get to a freeway. You can see that the LTS route is slightly offset from the LTS1 route, as I think the algorithm is suggesting I ride on the multi-use path instead of on the road. In order to have a low stress ride to Costco, I would have to ride at least 11 kilometers. Those suggested routes are 28 to 31% longer than driving, so most people would choose not to bike. My second example shows how the level of traffic stress can quickly change. This LTS2 infrastructure abruptly ends. You can see LTS1 infrastructure here if I turn to the left or right, but going straight ahead becomes LTS3. Skipping ahead, the addition of a slip lane makes this infrastructure LTS4, and a little confusing for a person on a bike who still wishes to go straight ahead. After some confusing barriers, this route now becomes LTS2 again. The city has provided good LTS2 infrastructure, but there's a gap of 800 meters of high stress riding. This gap is sufficiently long and stressful enough to act as a barrier to more hesitant people and prevent them from riding a bike. I hope you found this introduction to level of traffic stress informative and will consider giving the video a like. I plan to talk a bit about LTS in most of my videos as it will affect the route I choose to take. Please subscribe if you're interested in seeing how much stuff I can bring home from Costco in my cargo bike.